Hey all here, OS Reviews, you're watching our throwback look at the HTC Freestyle. This was a phone released in 2011, and what makes it unique is it runs on an operating system called BrewMP, developed by Qualcomm. It's largely forgotten and was primarily used for feature phones, but the HTC Freestyle got really close to being a smartphone because it had a multi-touch capacitive touchscreen. In fact, it was one of the only touchscreen BrewMP phones on the market, and used HTC Sense as a UI on top of the device, which is very similar to their Android phones and how it looked back in the day. So we'll take a quick look at the hardware of the device first. As a refresher of its specs, it does have a 3.2 inch display, which has a pretty low 320 by 480 pixel resolution, and it's absolutely minuscule by today's standards. Here it is next to a 6 inch phone, a Xiaomi Redmi device, and you can see how uh, far we've come in terms of making displays so much larger on standard devices. It also features a Snapdragon Qualcomm S1 processor. So that might be one reason why HTC decided to use this operating system is because they were also using the CPU made by Qualcomm and it has 256 megabytes of RAM. So again, pretty low end specs and a 1300 milliamp hour capacity battery along with a 3.1 megapixel camera on the back. The phone came with wireless Bluetooth as well as a uh, cellular connectivity uh, and a GPS but did not come with Wi-Fi. Now on the top, there's a standard 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, a power key that's pretty easy to reach thanks to the small size of the phone, rubber accents, including the rear one, which is actually removable to access the battery inside. Now the phone does also feature a micro SD card slot behind this battery door and you can insert a card up to 32 gigabytes. On the side there's a dedicated camera shutter key which is pretty interesting. Other side features a volume rocker that unfortunately doesn't feel super tactile and on the bottom there's a micro USB port for charging. Now the body of the phone is made out of a uh, unibody construction with aluminum so it does feel very premium very similar to other HTC phones like the Desire that they were building back in 2000 and 11. The front here doesn't have a front-facing camera, but features an oversized earpiece, status LED light, and below the touchscreen there are three keys which are backlit. They allow us to go into the phone dialer pad, which is uh, pretty typical and easy to use. There also is a hang-up key, which will take you into this main screen. There's also a back key that goes back one page, and there's also a menu key, which pulls up additional settings depending on the app that you're in. So the construction quality of the phone is really good, especially since it was only 70 bucks when it was new. Now, before we dive into the UI, I want to point out, you know, why Brew MP is interesting. It stands for Binary Runtime Environment for Wireless. And uh, this phone, by the way, is a GSM phone, so it works with AT&T service in the United States. So despite the fact that it says CDMA mobile phones here, it actually supports, I think, GSM as well. And since it's developed by Qualcomm, a hardware manufacturer, it has really tight integration with the chips that they're using, making the coding really efficient. And also, it's not a pseudo operating system. It doesn't have a virtual uh, machine like Java ME, so it runs natively on the chip. And what that means is technically performance can be really fast because there isn't any interpretation of a language that needs to happen. So rather than using an interpreter-based code, Brew relies on its own hardware, which means theoretically you can get faster performance. Uh, so it's interesting that they decided to go this route for mainly feature phones and entry-level devices. I guess it kind of makes sense because back in the early 2000s, processing power in mobile devices was still still not very developed. So oftentimes, uh, you know, phones like this had super slow CPUs, and so to make it run a little better, they had to really optimize the OS and software. Uh, but that's not really the case anymore these days, where even budget phones have at least a quad-core processor. So a big change has happened. Anyways, the UI here, again, very similar to an Android phone that was running on HTC Sense back in the day, including a lock screen here that shows you some notifications, and then you simply slide down to unlock it. But since it is using Again, Brew MP, it's not nearly as complex. It doesn't give you as many customization options. But we still have the presence of a drag down notification shade that allows us to select between three scenes. Definitely not the fastest phone in the world, but the touchscreen itself is pretty responsive. The screen is an LCD panel, and it's also IPS, so it does have fairly good viewing angles, again, especially for a budget phone. Uh, with that being said, it's not a laminated panel, so there is a gap between the cording Gorilla Glass and the screen that's underneath, which means that it does glare a little bit more easily under the sun. 
Other things HTC borrowed from their Android phones include Leap Screen, so you can pinch out to have access to all of these pages all at once, which was uh, something that they designed for their Android phones initially. I can tap on this oversized analog widget to add an alarm. Again, some of these uh, icons and the way they're displayed is a lot more simple than what you'd see from an Android version of HTC Sense, but still has a very similar premise. There's also a page that can show your shortcuts for dialing people. There's a page that shows your images. Uh, over here, we have uh, a weather forecast. And on the other side, we have one that's dedicated for contacts, one for messages, and Friendstream, which is a widget also on their Android phones, which consolidates your Twitter and Facebook profiles to continuously update you and give you new messages on this particular widget. Since the screen is so small, there really is only space for one widget per page, which is kind of interesting. Now, there's no ability for you to actually long hold and reshuffle or rearrange these uh, widgets, so they are basically fixed on these pages. Now, this is what the main uh, menu looks like. So because this was an AT&T phone, they included quite a few bloatware uh, on board. It's actually not a super bad thing in this case because there isn't an app store available, so pre-loading it with applications is at least better than having no options at all. Anyways, we have AT&T Navigator that uses the AGPS for turn-by-turn -turn directions, although it's a paid service. There's also a mobile web browser, which for the time was actually quite good uh, because it supported HTML, and again, it wasn't a smartphone. Um, obviously, we're not connected to the internet right now, but it also supports pinch to zoom, as you can see here, and the browser does re-render to try and fit the page to the width of the uh, screen. Now if I tap on the bar here, this is what the uh, QWERTY keyboard looks like. The phone does not have an accelerometer, or also known as a gravity sensor, so you can't actually tilt it to uh, move the orientation. But overall, it's actually a decent keyboard. There is haptic feedback, so the entire phone does vibrate whenever you're tapping on a key, and it actually is uh, surprisingly usable. There's Wiki Mobile. There's also a weather client over here that you can see some cities after refreshing the uh, information. And now this is a 3G-enabled phone, so again, it's going to be quite slow by 2018 standards for updating information. Uh, also, there's mobile eBay on here, which is nice. Uh, games and apps is where you'll, where you'll find a full list of all these applications which are pre-installed, so you can slide through these. There's also trial versions of, some, of very simple games like Miss Pac-Man, Jeweled, a game called Deer Hunter 3D, and City ID, which searches through songs after playing a few seconds of it, so it's like music recognition. So again, there's actually a surprisingly wide selection of pre-loaded apps. Not all of them are useful, but at least they are present. Next page over gives you the image gallery for the phone, the camera, and the video camera, which are dedicated as two different apps for whatever reason. Uh, so it really is the early 2000s thing to do. There's also a basic calculator on board here. You can see some lag here as we are going along, but it's, again, quite functional. Tapping on back there. We also have access to an FM radio, which you need to plug in the headphones to act as the antenna for it to function. And that's essentially it. There's just uh, settings here, which if we tap on, also looks a little bit like Android, as you can see. And scroll all the way down, we see that the operating system is Brew MP 1.0.2. So sadly, it seems like this is an OS that didn't receive much love. Now, it's interesting, though, because feature phones are still quite popular across Asia, and they're kind of making a resurgence. We saw that with Kai OS which is an operating system that has now received some support from Google. So I'm a little bit surprised that Qualcomm weren't able to at least find more success for Brew over in Asia and push it more heavily there. Uh, to see it uh, kind of fail to Kai is in some degree a little surprising in my opinion. So if we go into the camera first, you can actually launch into it just by holding on the shutter key here for a few seconds. And the interface is also just very similar to other HTC phones back in the day. It's actually not super bad. Uh, you know, it's a fixed focus lens. So if you're trying to capture images which are really close to the camera, it may struggle a little bit more, but it means that it's actually quite fast to snap an image. From here, I can also share it via uh, Bluetooth, Facebook, or by SMS uh, or text message. I can also delete it or I can view it back in my gallery here. So if I tap on this image now, um, it's going to take a second, and then I can also zoom in using pinch to zoom multi-touch, and it actually works quite well. This was a, another image that I snapped earlier that looks a little bit better because it's for a further away object. I can also tap over here to launch into the camcorder for video recording, which uh, kind of begs the question of why there is a separate icon for a camcorder and camera in the main menu in the first place when you can access both of them from within this one app. I can apply filters over the images, whether that's grayscale, sepia, negative, or none. 
There's also brightness, uh, saturation, ISO, and under settings uh, here, we can actually take a look at things like review after capture. Do I want that screen to show up? I can change the resolution here from three megapixels down to just one megapixels, uh, which is very low. And uh, there's also things like quality. So that's probably pertaining to video. You can do low, medium, or high, and high is pretty much only 480p, I believe. There's also a self timer that you can begin metering some sample preloaded images, which also comes with many of HTC's phones uh, running on Android and Windows phone back in the day. So they really didn't change the stock photos that much, but it's, the display is actually decent. Again, for a fairly small size, uh, it actually works better than expected considering, again, it's nowhere near HD in quality, but you can tell how it's uh, fairly saturated, bright, and pretty accurate looking for a phone from that many years ago. But really beyond that, if you're considering this as a, kind of a backup phone, maybe it's all right. But uh, you know, for the price that you'll find it now online, which is let's say around 20 bucks, I would probably recommend even an entry level Android phone uh, in place of this because it's gonna be more powerful. Most Android phones have built-in Wi-Fi, so it's gonna be more versatile for things like accessing the web when you do need it. And uh, again, it's probably a better value these days. So there really isn't a huge reason for you to consider uh, the HTC freestyle anymore. HTC really is such a experimenter in terms of OSs. From being the first manufacturer to make an Android phone, even though sadly it, you know, HTC is no longer in its heyday and uh, many folks have kind of forgotten its presence, especially here in the United States, they really were quite uh, adventurous in the 2000s. So you can check out more details in the links down below and other HTC devices we've covered. But for now, that's been our video. Thanks for watching here at OS Reviews. That was the HTC Freestyle with HTC Sense, a interesting Brew MP powered feature phone.